Come on, y'all, put your hands together for Caleb and Megan Lee. Such an honor to have y'all with us. Hey, brother. Obviously a semi-finalist on uh, The Voice, and we wanted his family to come because uh, the more that we were watching you guys on TV and rooting for you, not just because you're a great talent, but because you're a brother in Christ, the more we heard about your family's story and the, some of the unique things about it and thought, wow, the second we get a chance, we've got to get you to come here and have a conversation about not just how you're using your voice, uh, you know, to, to, be a, to be a platform for ministry, but how you, you're telling the story of your family, uh, I think to just really cheer a lot of people on to do likewise. And um, before we talk about all that, can you give us a little bit of your story? Caleb, tell us about how you became a Christian and your upbringing uh, before we saw you on TV last year. Yeah, I can do that. First off, how are you guys doing? That was, a, that was like a cold welcome. It's freezing out there, man. We're all, we're all thawing out. So you guys are like glad to be here, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I am too. And, you know, to answer your question, you know, my, uh, my story, uh, long story short, um, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. Um, great, hardworking, loving family, uh, but not a faith-based home. And um, never met my biological father. My, my mom had me when she was 18 years old. And um, biological father left at, at some point before I, before I knew it, and still to this day have not met him. But my mom got remarried. We lived with my grandparents for a few years, and my mom got remarried when I was five. And, um, you know, early on, I didn't really understand all that. And I know my story is not unique. Um, there's a lot of folks that have gone through that and gone through different versions of that. Um, but all the while growing up, I knew there was something special about that whole dynamic of him stepping in and, and taking me in as his son. Um, but, I, you know, it was hard to really connect the dots as young as I was. And um, met the Lord in high school. Um, fast forwarding through, through life, I started playing guitar and singing when I was eight years old. And that was always something I wanted to do. And I had a friend of mine invite me to sing at, sing at uh, church. And I just wanted to be a rock star at that point. So I didn't care where it was. Um, so I went and uh, never left. And uh, God got a hold of my life and really started using the things that he had um, birthed in me a long, a long time ago uh, for his kingdom. And, and um, that's essentially how we met and, and the rest is history. But it's been, it's been a kind of crazy ride, but um, it's, been a, it's been an awesome one. Megan, you have a, a different kind of a story. I mean, you grew up in a strong Christian home, but tell us a little bit about yourself and then how, um, how you guys met. Yeah, um, I grew up in a Christian home in Indianapolis, and then um, I was, hey, <laughs> um, I was going to go to a Christian college in Indy, um, but ended up getting a full ride to run track at Murray State University. Yeehaw! What? So on. You can't say that here. <laughs> Sorry. Ooh. It's like the name we don't speak of. <laughs> So I went to college hours away. I didn't know a single soul. Um, but I, I always felt growing up that I was going to marry young, and I even had a list written out of what I wanted in my future husband. Um, and I met this guy, and he had all of them. Do you want to know what was on the list? I'm going to tell you. I don't care if you want to know. Um, okay, so number one, he needed to love the Lord, right? Number two, I wanted him to play the guitar and sing. Nailed it. And number three, this was like bonus points. He needed to have curly hair. And when I, it's, it's gone now, but this man had a fro and it was awesome. We don't have pictures of that, do we? <laughs> now, was it a mullet or was it like full on oh, Kenny G oh, or what? so cute. No, it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was full fro. Somebody needs to find a picture real fast nope. so you can see this. Let's move on. <laughs> Um, but we met, and five months into it, he proposed, and nine months later, we got married. It's awesome. Yep. When you know, you know. On your list, was it like more specific? Was it actually country music? I mean, you wanted a guy with a hat? It, it wasn't, but I, I actually had gone on a, we weren't dating, I'd gone on one date with a friend of his, and he tells me about this guy that is leading worship, and he's got curly hair, and he's so awesome, and I was like, yeah, that's him. And he, our last name, our last name is actually Sharmahorn, which is not marketable at all. So he went with his middle name, Caleb Lee. So we go and the guy introduces me to Caleb and he said, hey, this is my buddy Caleb Sharmahorn. And I said, what is your last name? 
and then we ended up Sharma horn. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Bad. Thus Lee. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> All right. Hey, we got to talk about the voice. All right. Uh, can, can, for, if, uh, if maybe a few of our students aren't that familiar with the premise of it. Tell us a little bit about the voice, and then we'll want. I want to watch a video of your blind audition. All right, from the show. But uh, for anybody who's not familiar with the show. So you guys watch The Voice? How many, how many people watch The Voice? Watch The Voice. We got a lot of Team Kelly fans in the house, I'm sure. That was, a, that was weak. Um, yeah, so you know, The Voice, it, it was a crazy deal because we never really watched The Voice much. Um, but you know, the whole premise is you, know, you, you, uh, you go audition for four celebrity coaches, and that's awkward. Um, you're in Hollywood, on, and, on, and you know production is, aw and that's awkward because you've never done that before. And they're turned the other way, which is awkward again. And, and you know, they just put you in this situation, this pressure cooker kind of situation, right? And uh, but all in all, it was a lot of fun. We uh, it was a it was a long journey to get there. Um, I never really auditioned. How many so. how many people are trying out for the few that actually get on the show? So there was about forty thousand folks that auditioned for my season. And I think that's, I think that's kind of a, the normal number-ish. Um, actually, they reached out to me. They found a video of mine on YouTube and reached out and said, hey, would you be interested in auditioning? Flew me to LA and I did an audition for producers. And the next two weeks later, I was in LA for uh, the blind auditions and I was there for a month and, and the rest is history. So, so these four, four celebrities are, are faced away from you. You're singing, so they're basically voting whether they want you on their team or not, completely based on your voice. That's yeah. the name of the show. And then past that, you start competing, and, uh, and, and you can actually get turned from one team to another. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So you, 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 of the, of the 40,000, you you, they dwindle it down to 100 that comes to the blind auditions, and the 48 of those make a team. So it, it, you know, the, 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 it gets cut down quite a bit pretty quick. And uh, throughout the process, yeah, you, you do a, a battle round and a knockout round where you're going up against someone. And then, and then after you, if you get past that and you make it to the top 24, it's live shows from that point on. And it's week to week. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy schedule you know, for us. So we did a live show on Monday. We were on set all day, uh, live results show on Tuesday. And Wednesday morning, we wake up, and here's your new song. And uh, you learn it and film and rehearse and record and do it again on Monday. So here's your uh, blind audition. Let's watch this.
the show and they are huge fans of like I think like Oh wow. <laughs> I haven't I haven't seen that in a long time. That was that was a a memory. Man, does that moment change your life? I mean, you have 10 million people on average watching that show. So you go from someone no one knows to all of a sudden the whole world is cheering you on. Um, and uh, my favorite part is the, the, the line, his wife's right there. All right. But <laughs> my second favorite part is you look at your family, you look at your kids and you look at your wife to make a decision on who to choose, which transitions. But just like right now, like tell us about your family and tell us about your your kids, and obviously your life since then has been a whirlwind. You just finished a record. Kelly Clarkson's completely budgeted it, and you guys are about to release that. You're about to take off even to greater heights, but the demand of that on your family, tell, tell us about being a dad and a husband and putting that all into um, just time management in your life. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's, it's a full circle story because as I mentioned on the, on the video and at my audition, you know, I did, I did the Nashville thing, uh, the music thing, um, gosh, ten years, ago. ten years ago, nine, nine, ten years ago. It was just around the time we got married. Been married ten years this, uh, well, eleven years this July. I'm sorry. Um, so um, anyway, doing the music thing and I had a record deal go south, and there, I, you know, I had a lot of opportunities that a lot of other people have shared. You know, no, no one has ever had 100% success. You have you have your failures, you have your roadblocks, and uh, it came to a point to where I had to choose. Um, and it wasn't, for me, the way I like to put it, it wasn't me running from music, it was me running toward my family. Um, it, was a, it was a change of pace in that regard. And so we, we packed up and we moved to Florida. Um, had one baby on the way, Graylin. Uh, Graylin was there, Lily was on the way, and Joe Hunter was uh, yet to be born. But. And so that, for me, this whole journey has been um, first going after and running toward my family. Um, and that's why the full circleness of, of having them on stage with me after all of this craziness and after eight years of not doing music and back in music and not just back in music, but on that stage. Um, that's why it was so important to me to have my family out there with me because I would not, I wouldn't be there. I wouldn't be here, um, without them and their support and their encouragement. And I wanted the world to know, I wanted my family to know that, um, they were, it wasn't Blake, it wasn't about Kelly, it wasn't about me and being on The Voice, it was about us sharing this together. Um, and so that's, that's 
Yeah, I'm, I'm going to brag on him, though, for just a minute, because God has, a long time ago, gave him this incredible gift to sing, and you guys are all going to hear that and be led in worship by him tonight. And it, I tell you what, anybody who has ever heard him lead worship, they say, Jesus is in the room. Like, it's an inc incredible gift that he has. Um, so he led worship for a while to provide for our family, but um, God led him into the corporate world, which is great. And we would go to concerts and I would encourage him like, babe, you are better than that dude opening up for Blake Shelton. Like, why are you not doing this? And he, he would get frustrated with me rightfully so because he gave it, he gave it up for us he gave it up to provide for our family and not be on the road all the time and you know um and then full circle god shows up he didn't even audition for the voice he gets an email from the show they found him and asked him to to do this and so now once again he's able to do what he loves and do uh, use the gift that god gave him and and so um i think it's a that's a huge testament to to caleb and and his love for our family. <laughs> Pretty amazing that one of those moments in your audition, you, you actually chose a song that a lot of people would coach you not to choose. You chose it as well. Uh, you know, an old hymn uh, inst instead of just a country classic that just kind of played in the lane that was obviously going to be more about the show. Why did you choose that song? You know, I've been fighting to do that song. Um, since early on, and it was on my list. Kelly had asked me what songs I wanted to do, and that was always on the top of the list. And, um, you know, I knew and she knew, and we, we all kind of kind of come to the realization that it was TV, but at the end of the day, I wanted to push because that song was, that song had gotten me through a lot in life. It, 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 that's one of those songs that I go back to when I think about um, not knowing my biological father. When I think about uh, the struggles as a, as a, as a child, trying to, trying to trying to wrestle with this idea that your, your dad left and he didn't want you. Um, and as I, as I grew up and singing that song and hearing that song, it was just, it always ministered to me. Um, and I, the, reali the realization that I had was I was on a show where 10 million people watched every week and I, I, don't, I didn't know where they were with their faith. I didn't know where they were in life and I didn't know the circumstances that they dealt with, but I did know the truth of that song would speak to them no matter where they were. And, and there's so much on TV where we talk about the bad things and we, just, and we just skirt past the real truth and the real thing that we should have our faith anchored in. Um, and it was an opportunity, one, for me just to be me, uh, and two, for me to share a little bit of my heart with the world. Talk to us about adoption. I mean, obviously a big part of your family story is adopting JoJo from, you know, a, a, just a, a third world country. And so many people have watched that are following that, have probably been encouraged to adopt as well. Um, why did you choose that particular region of the world to adopt from? Why adoption? Um, I spent a lot of time in Nicaragua in high school and in college just loving on the kids in the orphanages. and. Um, I mean, that's awesome, but I just didn't really feel like I was making that big of a difference. Um, and I met Caleb, and obviously he had a heart for adoption, but um, we got married, and it was literally like on the bucket list on the refrigerator, along with nine other things that we still haven't done. Um, <laughs> and so I, I remember Caleb, and thankful for his wisdom in this, he called home, he was leading worship at an adoption conference, and I was at home with two children under the age of one, and he said, he said, Meg, I feel like we're never, we're never going to do it. It's never going to be a good time to, to adopt. We're never going to have $40,000 sitting in the bank account ready to do that. We just, we just need to do it. We just need to step out in faith and do it. And, and so we did, thankful to, thankful to him for that. Um, and, and here we are with little Jojo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, and you, Jojo has been a, a blessing for us, and for you know, for, it was it was this. For, for me, adoption is the gospel. Adoption is, and from my perspective, it, it it is the picture that we live out on earth of Jesus, our Savior, adopting us as His children. Um, it, I mean, it's there's there's just something about God's hand in that process, in that decision, um, and now for us in the blessing of having that child a part of our lives um, that we didn't want to miss out on, 
And um, it, wasn't, it wasn't just us. You know, I, th- I think he, um, as he grows up, he'll, I, I'm hopeful that he'll understand the truth uh, of adoption, not just by, uh, by teaching, but by action. It was a long journey. It was a fight to get him. It took over three years. Yeah, it was three, three and a half year process. Um, it wasn't easy. There was like, whether it's financial or, or spiritual or uh, lots of hurdles that pop up. Um, but for us, it was, it was about that little boy. Um, Megan, you moved to Nicaragua. Doing yeah, the so we, we had to live there for about four months, but you go with no return date and you don't know when you get to go home. And so we went hopeful that it wouldn't be that long and it was right around Christmas and we just didn't know, really know what we were walking into. And I remember it was like the day before Christmas and they said, your son hasn't been declared abandoned, which sounds really weird to celebrate, but that means he can't be adopted. And so when we found that out, we realized that this was going to be a much longer process than what we had anticipated. And my girls were there and they were gonna go home with Caleb and I just broke down in the kitchen and I was like, I can't, I can't stay here without my girls. Like we gotta figure this out. So I called my mom crying and I'm like, will you come to Nicaragua? <laughs> so she came and Caleb was back and forth working and, and it, was, it was not an enjoyable uh, time in our lives, but well worth it. And like you said earlier, how, how many orphans did you say 180? 186 million. Six in the world. million. Like we we were aware of that number, and what 186 million minus one is really it doesn't make that big of a difference to that number, um, but to to him and to us, it made all the difference in the world. Yeah, I know our students are hearing this and they're just dying to meet Jojo. Would you like to meet the Lee family as a full? <laughs> Bring him on out, would you? Come on. Bring These them beautiful up. little girls. And then uh, eight and nine, right? Are the yeah, ages? so nine, eight, and uh, well, almost eight. She'll be, she'll, she likes to think she's eight. There you go. And then Jojo's five. It's awesome. Hey, come on, put your hands together. Come on, for the rest of the Lee family. <laughs> hey, guys. Hello, hello, hello. Can you, can you introduce yourself? Say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everybody your name. Jojo. How old are you? Five. Tell them, tell them where you're from. Nicaragua. <laughs> Good job, buddy. All right, Lily. My name is Lily. My name is Graylin. <laughs> <laughs> They're a little nervous, but that's okay. They've been in front of cameras and on stages before. We have a beautiful family, Thanks. and man, like, honestly, uh, outside of signing all three kids up to come to Liberty University, yes. all right, for their future college. We can talk about that. Yeah. Uh, we, we just want you to know, man, that um, as, I'm not, honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of that show, but I got very interested in it when I found out about your faith, and then when I found out about your adoption story, and millions and millions of people were watching you and going, I wonder what that looks like and why, why would this guy make that decision? And um, it is inconvenient, it's costly, uh, but it's worth it because it is a picture of the gospel. Absolutely. And so and we, we are just thankful that people like you are leveraging your platform to be a big bright star for the things that matter to God. Can we thank this amazing family for who they are and what they do?